Hello guys, how are you getting on? You're very welcome back to my channel today. Happy New Year's to you. Uh, hope you had a good one. I certainly did. Welcome back to another episode of Season 2 of The Verdict. As we're just over halfway through the 2018-19 Premier League season, I decided it would be a good idea to, I suppose, look back on my start of season predictions and see sort of how wrong I was and if I was to make any changes to my predictions, what would I make? So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today lads, I'm going to be looking back on my predictions from the top six to the relegation zone, I'm not going to really look at look at the middle sector of the Premier League table, if that makes sense, because I mean that's kind of, I mean, you have more chance of winning the fucking lottery than getting that right, but um, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. So let's start off with the relegation zone then, I predicted at the start of the season that Cardiff City would finish 20th, Huddersfield 19th and Southampton 18th. Now obviously this isn't how it is at the minute. Currently Huddersfield are bottom of the table, Fulham are just above them and Burnley make up the relegation zone and just above them is Southampton only on goal difference and Cardiff just above them who are like two or three points clear of Southampton. So yeah I wasn't exactly right. So I predicted Huddersfield to go down and as things currently stand I will be right. Uh, Huddersfield are bottom of the table and I think they will stay in the relegation zone, whether or not they actually stay bottom of the table by the end of the season, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I predicted them to go down simply because I don't think they're good enough. I don't think their players are good enough. I don't think Wagner brought in enough in the window. And that's not necessarily his fault. Perhaps he didn't have, we can't imagine, he had massive financial backing in the first place uh, to go out and buy marquee players to keep Huddersfield in the league. But they're bottom of the table and really fucking struggling at the minute. Just above them is Fulham. Now, I predicted Fulham to finish high enough, I'm pretty sure, in the table. But, like, not how it turned out at all. They've gone through a manager. Jokanovic was sacked recently. They've brought in Claudio Ranieri. And to a degree, he has steadied the ship. But this is not how I expected Fulham's season to go at all, lads. I expected Fulham to be flying high, high-ish, as it was in sort of 12th, 11th. I think I predicted them in and around them areas because they brought in so many key players now the factor I didn't consider is that maybe it would take a while for these players to gel and maybe at the minute we're starting to see that happen they got a big draw they could have won it against Wolves they probably should have won it against Wolves at Craven Cottage a couple of weeks ago it was last week the games are so close together now during this festive period that it kind of feels like each week is going on the next but anyway I'm waffling now um, they went on to beat Huddersfield then thanks to a last minute winner from Alexander Mitrovic and they seem to be getting back on track. I don't think Fulham will be relegated. Now they could go through another sticky patch and if they do I think that could be enough to send them down. But uh, I think their players are good enough and Claudio Ranieri is a master at this kind of thing getting results out. We've seen it with Leicester obviously won the league with them. So yeah it should be interesting to see how Fulham do but yeah, they've struggled so far, and I was very wrong with that prediction. Also, currently in the relegation zone is Burnley. They have had a shocker of a season. Not what you've expected from Burnley at all, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, Burnley, who are so well-renowned for their solid defending and just good organisation under Sean Dyche, particularly last season when they finished, what was it, 7th or 8th in the table? Um... It's, it's just not what you expect to see from them. They've been so fucking sloppy this season. And as a result of that, they've conceded countless amount of goals. And they're in the relegation zone and struggling. Do I really think Burnley will go down? Very possible. Very possible. I mean, unless they're very busy in the transfer window, which they're not renowned for doing anyway. It's looking bleak for Burnley. It really is. Like They really do need to make their home a fortress now. Obviously, they beat West Ham. Was it? Two or three nights ago, um, but fuck me, like it, it is looking very, very bleak for Burnley, and they've got to be busy in the transfer window. They've got to change their style, I think, in order to keep themselves up. Southampton are just above the relegation zone in 17th on 15 points, but have a more significant goal difference to Burnley's, and I predicted them to go down. And I mean, I expected them to struggle, and I. I I'm not wrong in that regard. Obviously Southampton, I think Danny Ings was a good uh, purchase in the transfer window, the summer transfer window. Um, I think they've got it, they've got to, again, I'm saying the same thing for the, all the relegation clubs, but they've got to fucking spend the cash in January now. We're in January, so they've, they've just got to bring in some fucking decent players. And it's not as if they're a bad team, Southampton, but 
Again, under their new manager, I'm not going to try and pronounce his name, but they've improved. And I don't know what it is about a team change of manager. It's the same group of players. Maybe it's a different voice to listen to. We've seen it at Man United, and I'll get onto them in a minute as well. But it seems to just revitalise the squad, a new manager. And whether, as I've said, it's a new voice coming in, or it's just something different that's fucking inspiring the players. But yeah, it should be an interesting relegation fight nonetheless. Cardiff City, I also predicted to finish bottom. I don't think they will finish bottom, but I still do think they will get relegated. Cardiff have impressed me, you know. I think they've been the, uh, they've been far, far better than I thought they were going to be. By a fucking mile. I don't know what it is Warnock has done, but on paper, that group of players just isn't good enough to fucking survive in the Premier League. But they're managing it. I don't know how they're doing it. Can I see them keeping it up? I mean, it's getting to that stage in the season now. We're midway through, just over midway through, and it, it's fucking, it's crunch time, you know. They've got to, they've got to make their home a fortress, as all the fucking relegation candidates do. Um, and if you can stay solid away from home and not lose games, that's always going to help. Obviously, they got a big, big late win away from home against Leicester recently, thanks to a, a brilliant last-minute effort from uh, Camarasa. But yeah, I mean, Cardiff. You don't know what them are. I still think they will go down, but at the same time, they're quite unpredictable at the same time. Whether, as with Burnley and Southampton, you kind of know what you're going to get. And with the likes of Huddersfield as well, Fulham can be a bit unpredictable as well, but it makes for an intriguing fucking uh, run-in for the relegation battle, nonetheless. Right, I'm going to move on to the top six now, starting off with sixth. I predicted Manchester United to finish sixth, and they are sixth. A lot of people kind of said... That I was a bit harsh on Man United at the start of the season, that I was kind of underestimating them. But I don't think I have. I think I've been fucking spot on for once, lads. <laughs> I'm, as we all know, I am terrible at making predictions, but I think United, I've got pretty spot on. At the start of the season, I said I reckon Mourinho will get sacked. I didn't think he'd get sacked this early in fucking December. But I did think he would get sacked because of the conflict that was happening at the start of the season. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has come in and he has revitalised that squad and he has revitalised Paul Pogba. And that might not necessarily be down to his his personality or his you know managerial ability of players or player management abilities. But um, just a, again a different voice, someone that's not as dark and down and depressing as Jose Mourinho was. He's quite kind of bright and... Positive about everything Shulskar is. I don't think United are going to finish in the top four. And to be perfectly honest, I don't think they're going to finish any higher than they are at the minute. But it's definitely going to leave Man United fans very optimistic going into next season. Whether or not Shulskar gets the main role as manager, who knows. Obviously, he's only there on an interim basis. But if he keeps going the way he's going, why not give him the job? I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Do you know what I mean? So, um, it should be interesting. United fans... You know, it's maybe the start of the recovery of their club after what was a pretty toxic period under Jose Mourinho. Another prediction I got right, Arsenal to finish fifth and they are there at the minute, five points off the top four and that could have been very different up until a couple of weeks ago. Liverpool smashed them 5-1 the other day at Anfield and they looked fucking terrible Arsenal. It was literally like going back to prime Arsene Wenger era, like it was shocking. From Arsenal. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang had about 10 touches in the whole game and 6 of them were from tip-off. What? And he also missed an open goal but it was ruled offside so no one said anything about it. Very much like the end of Wenger's era where Arsenal were going to big away grounds and getting smashed. You think of them losing 6-3 to City at the Etihad a couple of years ago, 6-0 to Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, countless thrashings at Anfield against Liverpool as well. I mean, fuck me, like Arsenal, and it looked like they were on the up, they hammered Spurs a couple of weeks ago as well, or months ago, whatever you want to call it, and they looked like they were revitalised, they looked like Unai Emery was lifting a giant from the dead, but I mean, it just brought it back to square one against Liverpool, didn't it? And that might not be necessarily Unai Emery's fault, I mean, it's not really his squad if you think about it. As I mentioned at the start of the season, he, he did well in the transfer window. He brought in Bernd Leno. It took him a while to bring him into the starting eleven to replace Czech, but he has done that. 
and Socrates has become a pivotal you know, part of that Arsenal back four. Lucas Torreira, up until his game against Liverpool, was doing bits, like he was decent in midfield. And, you know, had a, a great strike force of Lacazette and Aubameyang, who he still refuses to start together. Oh, I, don't, I don't know why. Could be a mixture of things with, like, the situation with Mesut Ozil, like, what the fuck is his role at the club at the minute? I think Arsenal are definitely lacking a real leader at the minute. Um, they need a captain. They don't actually have a, a you know, a regular captain. Like, I would have said Kashelny, but I don't think, was he even captain the other day? He might have been. He was Mesut Ozil a couple of weeks ago, a guy who's rarely been in the squad this season um, Socrates had the captain of Ireland at one stage Aaron Ramsey the whole situation with him his contract there was a lot of talk he could be going to Bayern or Juve or PSG and he was made captain a couple of weeks ago as well Granit Xhaka was given like they don't actually know who their captain is and I think that's Arsenal's biggest flaw at the minute I still don't think they're going to finish top four but they could surprise me moving on to Chelsea then and another one I got right Chelsea are currently fourth and I keep on saying I'm right. I'm not right. The season's not over yet. We're only midway through. But as things stand, I am. So, I mean, I'm counting that as a win. Chelsea are fourth. It's been a, a topsy-turvy kind of season. When we look like we could be challenging for the title, we, we blow it away and lose to fucking Leicester or someone like that. We've got two big away wins in the last couple of games to finish off 2018. First beating Watford by two goals to one. Eden Hazard scoring his 100th goal for Chelsea. And then a 1-0 win over Crystal Palace the other day in which N'Golo Kante got the only goal. And we're now five points clear of Arsenal in fourth and things are looking alright for the minute. We've Southampton next which should be a win. Um, but I mean, we've got to just keep tipping along. As long as Arsenal keeps slipping up, we've got to be there to fucking you know capitalise on it. Chelsea have had some poor performances this season, there's, there's no doubt about that. Um, obviously... Low points being against Tottenham at Wembley and obviously Leicester um, at Stamford Bridge. They were two pretty fucking low points. But apart from that, Sarri's done all right, you know. He, he's done all right. He still hasn't brought in a striker, which we are in desperate need of. Because I don't think, I don't know how prolific Eden Hazard is playing as a false nine. I mean, lads, Mario Icardi's there. Fucking go after him. Someone like him, Edinson Cavani. There's still talk of Gonzalo Higuain coming to the club, even though he's on loan from Juventus at AC Milan. But that is the main thing we need at the minute. I think defensively, David Luiz has done all right since he's come back into the team. He's done, you know, typical David Luiz things at times. I think Rudiger's been good. I've been happy with Rudiger. Alonso's been, meh. Dave's been good, I think. Willian's been, again... Shaky enough. Kante is still adapting to that position, that new role he's been given. Jorginho, I don't think, is a CDM, but maybe time will tell otherwise. Uh, Barkley, I've been very impressed with. Loftus Cheek, I've been very impressed with. Obviously, Hazard is Hazard, he carries the fucking team. And Pedro, I've been impressed with as well. But we just need to get a striker. I think if we do manage to land a decent striker in the transfer window, I mean, we're flying it. A lot of people will say, oh, but you don't get big signings in January anymore. Liverpool got Virgil van Dijk last season in January. So don't come at me and say you can't get big players in January because you can. Chelsea need to go out and spend money on Mauro Icardi. The guy is worth it. We need to do it. Someone, maybe not Mauro, like Mauro Icardi, someone of that calibre. Edinson Cavani, Gonzalo Higuain, these names that I've all mentioned already. But we need to get someone of that calibre. Spurs are currently in third. And again, it's another one I got right. Or I'm getting right at this point. Um, Spurs have been impressive. Not going to lie, they've been very impressive. There have been times where they've bottled it this season. They just lost to Wolves. 3-1 um, at Wembley. Um, they're still in the Champions League after a very, very tough group. Barcelona, Inter Milan, PSV Eindhoven. That was a tough group to get out of. And they still managed it. Um, so Spurs should be happy enough with themselves so far. Do I think they're in a title fight? They're at that stage now where they're deciding whether or not they're in a title fight or a top four fight. And if they're in a top four fight, they're fucking cruising comfortably. But this is the time of the season now where Spurs need to kind of stand up and show us all the improvement and development they've made under Maurizio Pochettino. And I think that development has been fucking huge. Um, Absolute ballers in the team like Hume Min Son, Deli Ali, Christian Eriksen, Harry Kane is still banging in the goals. Um, 
you know, Toby Alderweire has come back. They have a lift of getting him signed down to a contract recently as well. Um, youngsters coming through like Kyle Walker-Peters, Harry Winks. You know, it's an exciting time to be a Spurs fan. But there's still the speculation of Pochettino going to United at the end of the season. And that's the only worry that I think Spurs have at the minute. Apart from that, they're flying. I got the top two wrong, <laughs> as things stand. Man City are currently second. I saw, I said that they would uh, retain the title. And can I say that I still think they'll retain the title? Not 100% certain, lads. Um, Liverpool are flying at the minute. They have a fucking incredible team. They had a great team last season, but two big signings being Alison Becker in goal and Virgil van Dijk, obviously, at the back. Just absolute ballers all around the park. Fabinho has come into his own as well. Genie Wijnaldum is going under the radar, but he's had a fucking incredible season. The front three are still firing. Roberto Firmino, who we thought was kind of drying up in the goals department, scored a fucking hat-trick against Arsenal in the 5-1 win. Salah is still scoring. Mane is still scoring. They're just an incredible team. And City have gone through a bit of a rough patch in December. I think they lost, what, three games or something like that. One of them being, obviously, to Chelsea. Um, another one against fucking Leicester. 2-1 against Leicester. I mean, and what makes things better is this Thursday, Man City and Liverpool face off in what could be the biggest game of the Premier League season. I mean, I'm so looking forward to it, lads. This is going to be... An absolute madness. Can Liverpool... If they, if Liverpool can get a draw out of this game, they will fucking take that. I did say going into these two games against Arsenal at home and Man City away, that if Liverpool can get four points out of a possible six, it will leave them in a very decent position going into the last couple of months of the season. They're currently, what, six or seven points clear of Man City now at the top. I mean, it's, get, it's getting scary, lads. It's getting scary. Liverpool might actually be in with a genuine... Well, of course, they're in a genuine chance of winning the Premier League title. I mean, if they bottle it, it'll be worse than 2014. That's all I'm saying. Because this team is a lot better than the team in 2014. There's just far more balance to the team. They were very top-heavy in 2014, I thought. But if there's any time for Liverpool to win the league... This is their time. So that's all for today's video, lads. Uh, starting off 2019, right? I don't. I might have uploaded once in January last year because I was quite ill over the month of January last year. But yeah, starting it off right this time around. So yeah, that's it. If you like, if you enjoy, subscribe if you're new. And yeah, have a good day. Catch you guys in a bit. Take care. And peace. Young winner come fear us. I'm a god like beer us. Made my mark light over Mars. I don't see nobody coming near us. Ain't no limit where we're going now. I got women always showing now. On the viewing any Judas Lumen make him missing. Ain't nobody kissing now. Young winner, young sinner, peace out when I'm done. And I head spin, I can't spin, I brought I'm the